Howdy folks, this is your Chief Edo Lansi. This is a continuation segment of the cooling water system. In this segment, we will be discussing sea water cooling system. And as you can see, uh, it's a straightforward uh, system though. As you can see here, we have the so-called uh, seawater pump, strainers, and the sieges. And to the right is the heat exchangers. On top, not necessarily the diagram as laid out, is the three-way thermostatic uh, control valve and of course the outboard valve. But before anything else, uh, we have to expand a little bit more about heat exchanger principles involved and its applications. And at the same time, we tackle both two types, plate type and the tube type heat exchangers. So, okay, let's begin. Now let's uh, expound and explain a little bit of these heat exchangers. So the principles are the same with plate, whether you are using the tube type uh, heat exchangers, it's just the same. And of course, uh, we just have to show you a little bit of the design. Now as you can see here in this uh, animation here, you'll be able to see here that there is a plant uh, uh, frame, uh, front cover, and the back is the so-called uh, uh, end frame cover. Now, uh, you'll be able to uh, di uh, distinguish these two things. The uh, front plate or uh, front frame cover is fixed, while the end uh, frame cover is movable or adjustable. And in between are the so-called uh, titanium plates. Uh, most of the uh, materials that are used in this kind of heat exchanges are titan titanium. But of course, it depends on the application and the industrial usage. Now, take note that heat exchangers can be utilized as liquid or it can be utilized in gas, fluid gas. Now you can see here also in the uh, animations that uh, the inlet for the uh, cooler which is the seawater is uh, going through the bottom and then it comes from the uh, upper uh, outlet while the uh, circulating uh, hot temperature which is the so-called centralized uh, freshwater cooling system the uh, hotter medium is uh, actually going through the upper inlet and then it goes out from the lower outlet. Now the uh, principle there is that of course uh, when the cooling medium is uh, warm then it becomes denser so it goes out. Now as you can see th there is a first plate. Now, the first plate as you can see if you look through inside right now there are these so-called gaskets and most cases uh, let's say the gasket that has been used is a Teflon, Teflon kind of gasket. Now you'll be able to see that it's a complete rounded and all throughout the whole length of the plate. That means to say both of the liquids cannot pass through in between the front cover uh, and the plate, or uh, starting plate. While on the end plate of these uh, heat exchangers, it's the same uh, as well. The reason for that is that you don't want to heat to ingress out through the frames cover of the heat exchangers while in between all those plates are alternate plates of if we can uh, designate it through colors red blue red blue and so on and so forth and you will be able to see here that the gaskets for example on the red, red one uh, you'll see here the opening and of course it goes down down to the next hole on the bottom wherein the flows of the outer uh, flow of the hot uh, medium is uh, in that way. So the other fluid will not come into contact with the fluid or the liquid that is being cooled down. Now on the other hand, the next plate of course, you will be able to see that this is alternately. The other one has the rounded cascades, so meaning to say the hotter uh, medium it's, it cannot go through the plates but instead it's the cooling medium that is actually going through that plate. Now as you can imagine in between plates you have the red and blue going through separately. They don't have a physical contact but instead they have the so-called thermal contact and in most cases the physical form of uh, the so-called uh, heat exchanging is uh, conductions. So and we all know to the fact that the warmer region as per law of thermodynamics goes to colder region. 
So if for example I give a value of 50 degrees, doesn't matter if it's Celsius Fahrenheit, if that's the uh, hot uh, medium, and you have the cooling medium, let's say for example we have 30 degrees, let's say you have a 10 degree loss on the hot medium, then you will have a 10 degrees gain on the colder medium. So hereby your heat exchanges is basically going into that kind of, uh, is applying that kind of principles and of course in applications, not just in theory. So the same thing with the same thing with the tube type uh, exchangers, and uh, these uh, exchangers now it could be in this system is a multi-pass as you can see the design it's a multi-pass system, and so with tube type uh, heat exchangers it's a multi-pass system you can see the chambers here, they are subdivided inside and within the shell, so it passes through both the going uh, in uh, liquid and going out uh, liquid. So uh, it, it can uh, pass through all those coils. And with that, the optimization and performance of uh, heat exchanges, exchanges are, uh, mo uh, are, are uh, met accordingly. Now, uh, heat exchangers are, of course, termed in different ways. When we are using it in reliquary function plant, like for LPG systems, in LPG ships with reliquary function system, or in the refrigeration system of your air condition or the air condition of the ships, this can be utilized as condensers as well. You see, if you pass a uh, hot gas through that uh, shell plating with a cooling medium, then it turns into a liquid, and we call it condenser. On the other hand, we can also call it as coolers. And while in some uh, industrial uh, usage or in LPG, LPG ships, it, get, it can be also used as heaters. So if you want to heat up the cargo, then you pass through the cargo within the shells and you pass through the uh, seawater outside the shell and when the cargo passes out, uh, and when the cargo flows out, then you have a warmer cargo if you are carrying a refrigerated cargo. Then the same thing, uh, in, while in this uh, seawater uh, temperature uh, system, it's different. We are cooling actually the uh, hot medium, uh, the one that is circulating from the jacket cooling water press water system. Right, so let's show you a bit more of the diagram and its flow and then I'll turn you around again with the uh, virtual reality. Okay, we are just about inside the engine control room and we are about to go out and go down the uh, area wherein we'll find the seawater cooling system and of course all the associated equipments about cooling system. So let's get out and uh, go down the stairs. We are just down by the uh, bottom of Bill's area where you could see here the sea chests uh, for uh, one and uh, two sea pumps. Uh, Sea pumps also can have uh, alternate pumps like the fire and GS or general service pump and even the emergency fire pump can be uh, in duplex or in uh, line with this uh, system so for uh, uh, any uh, issues that may arise and you could see here the uh, upper uh, bulkhead uh, suction uh, switches and the lower uh, switches uh, suction and you have bulbs here and you have here the strainers so it's self-explanatory and you have the bulbs and of course it goes up to the next level you'll be able to see here also on top the uh, grills and you could see here uh, the uh, area actually and this is uh, pipe is the uh, return pipe for recirculation which I'll show you in the other uh, deck level so let's go and uh, find that out so let's gotta get out of here and go to the next level the uh, level wherein you'll be able to see the uh, major arrangement wherein the two pumps uh, from the bottom below wherein the CTS uh, we just came from a while ago and you could see here that the uh, discharge outlet uh, from the suction side and to the discharge uh, outlet going to the uh, pipeline system and you'll be able to see that uh, the pipes actually serves uh, many uh, um, auxiliary uh, lower temperature uh, 
machinery such as uh, the uh, condenser for the uh, boilers uh, for the feed the uh, water tank and also it supplies for the press water generators uh, for the coolers of the uh, lubrication of the main engine and also for the uh, air cooler of the main engine and so many other things so uh, the seawater system actually is uh, in duplex with the uh, centralized cooling system which is the fresh water cooling system so as you can see it has also a three-way thermostatic bulb or we can also term it as three-way thermostatic mixing bulb because uh, as the word uh, as it implies uh, mixing uh, it's uh, also um, basically mixing the water that is circulating through the heat uh, jacket uh, exchangers and at the same time uh, uh, mixing it with the water that is coming from the sea now seawater is basically in general used for uh, low temperature machinery at the same time it's used for the cooling of the centralized uh, cooling water system which is press water uh, for one good reason is that the water is abundance at sea unlike press water it has to be generated uh, from time to time but with seawater uh, it's completely all around the ships where it's uh, selling to so in this uh, typical uh, design which is basically in most conventional ships it has the same arrangement but of course it may differ with the uh, other ships but as you can see there's your uh, jacket heat exchangers and you could see here that the uh, inlet of the high temperature is coming from the main engine is going through the bottom and of course uh, I, I'm into the top and the outlet is coming out from the bottom and if we go to the seawater uh, area just underneath uh, let's go down here you could see also that uh, it has a thermal uh, bulb and then of course it uh, goes in uh, in the bottom and then it goes out from the top so again uh, the other pipes that uh, comes back is from the generator system and also from the press water system and from the lube oil uh, lubrication system of the main engine and so on and so forth and this is a close-up look of your uh, thermostatic uh, three-way bulb it can be set with the uh, temperatures that is required for the uh, system okay let's see about the applications and as you can see we have the CTS here we have the strainers and we have the seawater pumps and I may, as I mentioned earlier seawater pumps also can be substituted or alternately uh, you can use the so-called fire and general service pumps including the emergency fire pump if the uh, issue or any issue or like maintenance arises and as you can see through the lines it supplies to the heat exchangers or coolers or condensers as we call it and it goes out and of course it goes again uh, to the uh, open cycle or overboard bulb now if for example that the temperatures uh, that has been met through the settings of the three-way thermo control bulb or as we call it also as a mixing bulb then it can also recirculate box and again it will pump uh, in and it loops in cycles so this is the uh, explanation of seawater uh, cooling and coming up next, uh, we will be discussing fresh water generators and oily water separators. So keep posted and please uh, subscribe if it pleases you. Thank you.